Sheikh Imran Hussein claims that Muhammad predicted coronavirus. I'm going to summarize his argument in one line. Coronavirus is a tool of the Dajjal, a Jewish conspiracy aimed at reducing the Arab population around Israel. Wait, you don't believe me that this is what he's saying? I don't normally say this, but I'm going to demolish this video so badly that he's going to regret making it. I'm your friendly neighborhood ex-Muslim, Abdullah Samir. I create videos on the topic of Islam from a former believer's perspective. Join the channel now to keep up to date with my latest videos. Now, I give you Sheikh Imran Hussein. If you want to do that, you have to have insight, you have to be faithful to the truth. And then you can understand coronavirus. That's right, in Akhiru Zaman, when uh, the last stage of history comes, Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam said it, and they know it. He was, uh, it was the husband of Tabu Tabuk, the war of Tabuk. And he was sitting in a leather tent, this is a hadith of Sahih Bukhari, and uh, he said, count six things before the end of the world, the Sa'a. And amongst the six is, let me get it for you, amongst the six he said, Thumma Mutan. And then he said, there will be a plague, Ya'khuzu fikum ganam. There will be a plague, meaning an epidemic, and it will kill you in large numbers the way it kills sheep. This is what he said. This is one of his prophecies. Very scary. There will be a plague that will kill you in large numbers. Well done, Prophet Muhammad. What an incredible prediction. A plague that will kill people. Brothers and sisters, let us all reflect on the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how amazingly precise this prophecy is. A plague that kills people. Incredible. Ex-Muslims, atheists, Christians, and the rest of you, Jews too, you have to now admit that Islam is true. The proof, the hujjah has come to you from Sheikh Imran Hussein. You have no excuse not to believe. The proof has been laid before your eyes and there is no denying it. Muhammad predicted a plague that will kill people, lots of people. Plague is a disease that affects humans and other mammals caused by a particular bacterium. Humans normally get it after being bitten by a rodent flea. The plague in the 14th century killed hundreds of millions. Half of Europe's population was destroyed. In the 1890s, it claimed 12 million lives, mostly in India. Now, Muslims love to claim that Muhammad's prophecies came true, so he must be a prophet. Let's put aside that this prophecy isn't time-bound. It isn't specific. It doesn't mention anything about when the plague will come. But let's excuse this weak prophecy for a moment and go back to the 14th century when this happened. Europe is getting devastated by the plague. People are dying in the hundreds of millions. So that's evidence of Muhammad's prophecy coming true, right? It took seven centuries, but it finally happened. Time for the Day of Judgment, right? The Day of Judgment is coming, guys. There's a big plague and everyone's dying. Oh no, quickly turn to Allah. Wait, that's not what happened, is it? Okay, let's continue to the 1890s, where now the plague is killing millions again, mostly in India. Day of Judgment, guys. Sky is falling. Oh wait, that's not what happened. No Gog and Magog. No Imam Mahdi. No Jesus returning and killing the piggies. Hello? Are you there? Hello Allah, I've been wondering if after all these years you'd like to meet. All these weak prophecies about the Day of Judgment never seem to bring about the Day of Judgment. Muhammad is supposed to be the very first sign of the Day of Judgment coming. Yet from his time until now, no Day of Judgment. Christians have been waiting 2000 years for Jesus to return. Muslims have been waiting 1400 years and it never happened. Why is that? The same thing with all other end of time prophecies, like naked Bedouins will build tall buildings. The Burj Khalifa started 15 years ago 
and was completed 10 years ago and yet no Day of Judgment. Not to mention the ones who made it were Kufa architects and the Arabs that made it definitely weren't naked destitute Bedouins. So how much longer do we need to wait for this so-called Day of Judgment? It's not coming. Don't hold your breath. So Akhir zaman is a time when there will be epidemics, plagues. The, the word which used to be used long ago was plague, but nobody uses that term anymore. Now they use the term epidemic instead of plague. And uh, in the epidemic today, we have the coronavirus, which has just attacked China. Yes, they do use the word plague even today. The plague still exists. As this poster indicates, it's caused by a bacteria that spreads to small mammals and the fleas. Without treatment, plague results in the death of 30% to 100% of those infected. Typically, if you die, it occurs within 10 days. With treatment, however, the risk of death is around 10%. Ah, so Allah is wrong. The plague is actually quite easily treatable. By the way, plague is bacteria. Coronavirus is not bacteria. It's a virus. So it doesn't fit the bill at all. Does it make sense to change the meaning of the word to allow for all epidemics, even though plague does have a specific meaning? Do you want to ignore this specific meaning and take it more generally, even though we're talking a prophecy from God himself? He couldn't get the details right that we have to edit it and make it make sense. And one of the functions of the scholars of Islam today, if you are able to read the world correctly, is to offer an insight and offer an explanation and say Allah knows best. That's right, just say it, Allah knows best. You can be right, you can be wrong, but you must at least come forward and offer an explanation, which is what I'm doing. What's the point of that stupid disclaimer of Allah who Allah knows best? Obviously Allah knows everything, so what's the point of saying that? Clearly anything any of us do is a best guess effort. Is this just a get out of jail card for taking responsibility for your words? So you can say whatever you want and then say, oh, but I said Allah knows best. I guess I was wrong. Ha ha. And my view is that Dajjal is at work in coronavirus. The one who wants to rule the world from Jerusalem. So he has to have a Pax Judaica, which will replace Pax Americana. The way Pax Americana replaced Pax Britannica, you know, three, the three. Pax Britannica, Pax Americana, Pax Judaica, so that Israel can rule the world. And Allah speaks of this in Surah Al-Mursalat. And when we interpret the Quran, only Allah can confirm that it is correct. But we must make the effort to interpret. Don't be afraid. Have some backbone. Intaliku ba'da uzu billahi min ash-shaytan yajim. Intaliku ila zillin zi thalasi, zi thalasi shu'ab. Proceed now to that shadow which will come upon the world. A shadow which will have three parts. Just to make it clear, he's quoting Surah Mursalat, Ayah 30. This is ridiculous. What is this surah talking about? Well, let's look at the context. Let me read it to you. Woe that day to the deniers. They will be told, proceed to that which you used to deny. Proceed to a shadow of smoke having three columns, but having no cool shade and a wailing knot against the flame. Indeed, it throws sparks as huge as a fortress. 77, ayah 28 to 32. Now, is it not abundantly clear what these ayat are talking about? Are they talking about the new world order? Or is it talking about what will happen to disbelievers on the day of judgment? Anyone with half a brain here can see that he has twisted the meaning of this ayah beyond any reasonable interpretation of what it should mean. This is incredibly dishonest. Notice he didn't quote the context. That was on purpose. A shadow we shall have three parts. And my opinion, and Allah knows best, these are the three parts. 
Now comes the anti-Semitism. Of course, what would an Islamic lecture be without anti-Semitism and Jewish conspiracy? Israel will rule the world. Give me a break. If you should be scared of anyone ruling the world, it's China. China is the up-and-coming superpower of the world right now. Israel is a minor player in the world compared to China or even Russia. In order for a Pax Judaica to replace Pax Americana, in order for Israel to become the ruling state in the world, the population of Arabs, this is Muslim and Christian Arabs, which surround Israel, has to be substantially reduced. You cannot reduce that population substantially through warfare because you'll get a very bad name. You can use warfare to take control of territory which is what Israel is going to do. But in order to substantially reduce the population and not be blamed for it, you need something called biological warfare. So he throws in some conspiracy nonsense and then adds some anti-Semitism as salt. Straight up racist anti-Semitic conspiracies about Israel wanting to wipe out the population of surrounding Arabs using chemical warfare? But with biological warfare, you want it to be targeted, right? Not indiscriminate killing. Coronavirus is likely to affect a big chunk of the world's population, up to 70% if it continues to spread. It's not directed by any means. It hits everybody. It even infected one dog. According to the BBC, over 3,000 global deaths are in China, but in the past few days, there's been nine times more new infections outside China than inside. And let's see if it fits the prophecy of killing everyone like sheep, like he said. According to the New York Times, the death from seasonal flu is typically around 0.1% in the US. The overall fatality rate of coronavirus is between 2 and 3%. That's right. Does that sound even remotely close to what Sheikh Imran described? So this terrible disease of the Dajjal slash Pax Judaica kills only 2-3%, mostly old people and those with compromised immune systems? What a dumb so-called chemical weapon that is, targets the elderly and weak that can't be of any use in a war anyways. Like really, what kind of garbage is this coming from Sheikh Imran? You know, I normally like to be charitable with my opponents and give my interlocutor the benefit of the doubt. But the claims made here are so dishonest and disingenuous, even twisting the Quran, Surah Mursalat, so badly that I can only imagine he is a dishonest fraud, milking his audience for all he can get. The things he said here are so off base from reality that I can't believe even he believes this. Is he the Muslim Alex Jones, building an audience off fear mongering and conspiracies, of sheep that don't bother fact checking anything he says, even the verses in the Quran? Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed watching me tear this argument apart. Please consider supporting me on Patreon or a one-time donation on PayPal to help me continue this work. Details are below. Your support helps me to make more such videos and invest more time and energy into this project. I'm excited to take this further, take it to the next level so to speak, to upgrade the quality by adding subtitles to every video to help those whose first language isn't English to more clearly understand it. Please consider it. Thanks for watching. This is your friendly neighborhood ex-Muslim, Abdullah Samir, signing out. Also, you can join my channel below on YouTube and get early access to the videos. Supporters on both Patreon and YouTube get early access to my videos. Thank you.